<laughs> it's so dark in here. You can't see anything. We're going to go on an epic adventure today in the... Idaho Panhandle National Forest. Yeah, it's just above Coeur d'Alene and it's about a 50 mile scenic loop through the mountains. We'll probably find some camping up here and also see what type of obstacles we run into with our truck camper as we go doing some cool routes and obstacles and all that fun stuff. And maybe if the sky clears, we'll get some good views of the lake. So awesome. come along for the adventure, let's get rolling. We got to probably the first open area on the ridge line, and it's right around this really big power pole that goes across the way. But we thought we'd stop here and air down and it's absolutely beautiful. The mist is kind of lifting from the storm last night and the clouds are moving out and it just looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, Idaho is pretty amazing because it's almost 70% for service land and they have more roads open than pretty much any of the other forests that we've been in. There's still a lot of gates, but it's pretty amazing how much you can go explore. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and air down like Faith said. We use these little basically screw on um, deflators, which are super simple. They just screw onto the valve stem and then we just use a tire pressure gauge to monitor them, but they're really easy because that way you can get the tires exactly kind of where you want them. We've used all tire air downers from the ones that are preset to the valve removal guys. And most of the time we keep going back to these guys because they're so simple and easy to do. I think we're going to run uh, 35 in the rear, 25 in the front because we won't likely exceed probably 30 miles an hour out here. And airing down the tires helps with them to kind of conform around the rocks, helps the tread blocks not chunk quite as much, and also uh, just gives a little nicer ride. So let's get airing down. The beautiful Northwest rainforest type areas, it's all dense treed and beautiful. The rain last night really was great to cut down on all the dust and hopefully yes. help eliminate some of the fires, but beautiful drive. The one thing with a lot of the Northwest uh, forest roads and trails and so forth is that the trees can actually be so dense that you can't get the view out to see any of the surrounding areas. And it'll be interesting, we got that really pretty view at the high voltage power lines, but we'll see how much more we get as we come up this road. More puddles! Last night's rain left a lot of puddles, and the puddles are a bit sandy. Woo! That was a lot of water. Roadblock! Our first roadblock. I think we can probably just hand saw this one down. I might be able to just move it out of our way, though. Let me oh. see how yeah, that's true. pliable that guy is. The trees, they're a lot smaller, making it easier for the camper to go through without getting damaged. Been nice so far, not any clearing of trees. Well, we came to a fork in the road and it appears it goes up to Buckles Mountain. We're about 4,200 feet elevation and it goes up to 4,700 feet elevation. It's kind of strange because it goes from the Panhandle National Forest to Coeur d'Alene National Forest in that little square where the mountain is. Anyways, we're gonna try to head up there, maybe eat lunch at the top, we'll see. It's exciting! Yeah, it's fairly overgrown coming through here. Thankfully, most of these trees are, you know, pretty uh, flexible branches and whatnot, even though um, they're basically rubbing on the camper and whatnot. It wouldn't be an adventure without a little tree trimming. Little these sections of the tree are actually dead or broken. That section over there that's hanging in the middle of the road is actually broken off, but it's still caught up in the other branches that it won't fall. I tried pulling it down, but it must have snapped under the weight. Peter's bringing this section down. Very dead branch. Yeah, <laughs> our batteries went dead. We've been going through them on our saw and actually the uh, saw lost connection for the first time ever, it quit working. And it turns out that it was kind of in this, uh, see how we do this here. Yeah, in this center connection link. This one, right here. 
Yep. Yeah, our saw cut out and uh, it wasn't the batteries, it was a connection. And I uh, pulled apart the handle and uh, used that opportunity to get rid of the safety switch, which is super annoying. And then I actually found the culprit was these little pin connections. They kind of got enlarged from moving around, but just squeezing them back together and it's back in action. We're rocking it out here pretty hardcore. Going up to this uh, viewpoint, you can see uh, the truck over here. Uh, it's gotten increasingly tight in the trees and we're probably at least two hours of whacking through the brush so far and it's uh, a good challenge. I think we're real close to the top. Hopefully the view is worth it. We might just camp up out there just to make it a worthwhile endeavor. But uh, there's no real turning around when you get this far in and uh, the trees just keep getting a little bit tighter. Anyways, it's quite an adventure. We'll keep rocking it and we'll show you the view. Well, we, we ran into a new problem. It was called running out of battery power and we didn't put our other batteries on the charger quite fast enough. You can see how far we've kind of cleared behind us and we were actually really close, probably oh maybe 300 feet to the top of this thing and uh, you can see oh, there's the truck and we uh, yeah we didn't put the batteries on the charger fast enough because we were thinking it wasn't going to be that uh, socked in here with trees and turns out we were wrong and that means that all of our batteries are dead and they are slowly charging We'll see, we might end up just camping here on the road before we hit the summit, depending on our battery charge timeline. It could be interesting. Sounds like a little thunder lightning's coming in as well. We cleared another, oh, probably 100 foot of tree branches here. It may not look like it, but substantially reduced enough where we can drive the truck through. Faith's driving it up here. And you can see this is uh, one of those times where it's a persistence type situation and uh, and you get through it you know it's a good lesson in life with uh, just not giving up and eventually you can make almost anything happen but it is a pretty tight squeeze for a big rig we had a just a standard size four-wheel drive we would probably just push through all the brush Certainly with their old Tacoma we would have because we weren't really too concerned about it. But you can see we're fitting it through. All right, that's pretty good. Thank you. Good job, babe. The tree trimming continues. I think we're probably on battery, I don't know, 17. Um, unfortunately, they're not charging as fast as we are going through them. Um, probably not so great for the battery, but we are cycling them because we're only getting probably about 10, 20 minutes of use. And as you can hear, there is thunder and lightning on top of us and the rain has already opened up. Fortunate for us, the Idaho canopy is very thick. Um, and I think we're actually in the Coeur d'Alene National Forest right now. It's a small section that's not part of the Panhandle. Um, but this road has obviously not been heavily maintained in a very long time um, and it's getting a little wet hopefully though if you can see just past Peter that clearing over there uh, I think that might be where we turn and it opens up right before we're gonna camp tonight um, this trail was my idea I thought I would be adventurous and find us an epic view spot 10 years ago it would have been an epic view spot but unfortunately the trees have grown in and the view is very minimal but still an adventure hope you guys are enjoying it oh man we are popping out at the top of the hill it's pretty epic all right stay wide that looks good all right cut it back passenger perfect straight out Straight out, more. Nice. Perfect. Oh yeah. All right, we got one other low hanging tree branch. All right, hold passenger on this one. That should work, straight. All right, cut it back passenger. 
hold there, strain it. All right, got another low branch. Yeah, whole wall passenger. A little bit of deflection, no big deal. And oh man, <laughs> we've been it to the summit. This is the top of the mountain. <laughs> All right, let's uh, level you out and uh, we'll get in uh, out of the rain. We escaped into the camper as we were getting wet, but we made it. We Woo! made it to the top. That was epic. That was. Adventures are not short of challenges, <laughs> but the challenges are what builds character <laughs> and makes for good memories. And it's pretty epic. I think it'll be a sweet spot to camp for tonight. And maybe we'll fly the drone tomorrow and see if we have a cool view that we just can't see. That would be awesome. The All fog right. rolled back in and the clouds are low. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you in a minute. Road headed back towards, I guess, town area, and this is a really nice mountain forest service road. Totally cleared, graded. It's a lot more open. Really, really easy drive road. Still pretty scenic, but really the only view spot we had was that one up there at that uh, turnoff kind of uh, overlook. Otherwise, we're just kind of a nice drive through the trees. Certainly not technical, but just very scenic. Look at this epic view. You can see the city below us, the big old lake. Man, this place is awesome. What do you think, babe? Man, that's the view that we were going for. This would have been the spot to camp. It is on the main road, but wow, that's, that's the view we're hoping for from this drive. That's sweet. Well, we made it back out. Definitely the most scenic adventure was getting up to Buckles Mountain, and the rest of it was just a really pretty drive. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. And we're going to hit down to the main highway, and I think we're going to head out to a lake and do a little bit of paddling and biking. Yeah. Go explore around for a couple days. We'll show you that coming up. Hit the like button, subscribe. We'll catch you later. Thanks. Thank you. It makes us really sad to see the forestry department was letting us know that there are some areas getting trashed. And as you can see, there's been a lot of trash that has been left here. A ton of shotgun shells and garbage and cans and it doesn't seem very nice. No, this sucks. People, clean up after yourselves. If you want to go shooting places, you know, clean up your targets and all your ammo and all that fun stuff, your shells. Uh, it's crazy to see this really sad. And then people come and dump their other trash like mattresses. That's how this stuff gets shut down. So let's keep it uh, clean and nice. We kind of piled up some of the trash that we found here. So it's more consolidated, but it's still, it's everywhere. Probably need to get a trash cleanup party up here. But uh, yeah, let's keep this stuff open. You know, keep the stuff nice. <laughs>